foam clay is amazing. But a lot of people have the problem that because it takes such fine de detail, it's both a blessing and a curse. Maybe you've had this problem where you're trying to sit there and uh, shape your foam clay and you leave a fingerprint behind and it shows up in your end product. What I'm going to tell you today is how to get your foam clay to be super smooth. All right, thank you guys so much for joining. If you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so that you get notified whenever we come out with these cosplay quick tip clips. And with that, if you've had this problem where you can't quite get your foam clay smooth or it takes too much detail, uh, go ahead and comment with smooth in the comments below. Go ahead and do that right now before we even continue. All right. As we do that, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start and show you how to get your foam clay to be nice and smooth. The trick is water. Water is your friend with foam clay. I'm going to crack open this big tub o fomo. Big tub o fomo. This is a 900 gram tub. 900 gram <laughs> tub. <laughs> nice accent. Yeah, I don't know what accent it is. All right, so I'm going to just grab a little bit here, throw it down. Okay, so all right. So you can also use the 300 gram tub, empty FOMO tub that you might have laying around to put some water in. Um, so I'm using FOMO. There's other foam clays out there as well. Um, so when you're sitting there shaping your uh, piece, I don't know. Let's see, what should we shape? Just do, let's just do a ball, just to kind of, okay. okay, so we're just going to roll this into a ball real quick and show you. So sometimes, got a little hair in there, hold on, um, you can get kind of these seams and different things that show up, right? And then even as I'm just touching that, I don't know if you guys can see, it's like taking fingerprints. Right yeah, there. that was really visible. Yeah. So, um... What you can do is once you get it into your general shape, and I actually end up doing this like multiple times throughout the process, especially if I'm sculpting something that's a little bit larger, um, is throughout the process, first off, I'm going to come in here with this. I just dip my finger in some water. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to press in and try to eliminate those any of those big seams, right? So then I'm going to roll this again a little bit. So right now we're doing like a first pass, just getting rid of those big seams so that those aren't as super visible. And then we'll worry about the fingerprints. So it's just kind of pressing along. Now you can see what happens is when you're using the water and you go, uh, you get it kind of too wet, it'll start to do this a little bit where it starts to kind of um, have more like kind of pieces of it that are kind of coming up and it's not really getting smooth anymore. A little grainy. A little grainy. That's the word I was looking for. It's a little grainy. Don't worry about that. Just let it dry a little bit as you're kind of working in some other areas. And then you can come back to that. And once it starts to dry out a little bit from that water on the surface, you'll be able to then go ahead and um, come back and get the that grain gone with just another like pass of the water with a quick smooth pass at the end. All right, so I've gotten rid of most of the um, big grains here. So now, big um, seams that might have ended up being visible, and that's just from when you're folding it over on itself and it's trying to like meld into itself. Um, so now I'm just, partially what I'm doing by rolling it again is I'm getting it into a better ball, but also too, I'm uh, kind of helping it to dry off a little bit. Man, I've got a bunch of like paintbrush hairs all over. Okay, so then now that we've got it, you can kind of see we've got fingerprints and a couple other things like some more hairs. <laughs> Is it dog hair? I think it's it's either paintbrush hair or dog hair. Cedric. Silly Cedric. Okay, so now that it's kind of um, dried a little bit more and you can kind of see we've got some of the fingerprints in there, I'm going to just give it a nice little pass with the water. You don't want to like rub it too much or too long. Um, just kind of give it a nice little coat and then move on, right? So with this ball, it's going to be kind of hard to get all of it. But usually, especially if it's something that you're kind of like working on that you can set down and not be touching at the same time, then you can do kind of different sections of it. 
Um, also, another trick that will help is if you have, um, you know, a pair of like <clears throat> gloves that you can wear, those thin fitting gloves that uh, basically eliminate your fingerprints for you. Um, I don't tend to use the gloves just because they kind of like make my hands feel weird. <laughs> but <laughs> but you can definitely do that. That'll help from even prevent from even leaving the fingerprints to begin with. But essentially, then once you get that set up, you're just going to kind of let that sit on the surface. Um, kind of keep an eye on it as it starts to dry. If there is any kind of anything that starts to sh that shows up a little bit for you, it's still not too late to then go in and kind of do another little wet wet pass on the top. What's going to happen is the surface is going to start to dry before the center does. Um, but even uh, you know at a certain point, like when I did my Bowser here, you can see how smooth you know I got a lot of the different uh, areas on him. And even as he was drying, like there's some areas where I wanted wrinkles because he's kind of like a wrinkly guy, but it's, it's nice and smooth. And so what I had done with that is at several points throughout the process, I was like, you know, doing like a little wet coat on the top um, surface, even as it started to kind of dry a little bit. Once again, you don't want to do too much to where it gets grainy. Um, but if you do that, just kind of give it a second and then come back. So uh, that's a great tip. Basically using water to help get your foam clay nice and smooth. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you like that, go ahead and give it a like. If you didn't like it, give it a dislike. But uh, if you found it helpful and you know someone that could use that as well, that's been working with foam clay, go ahead and share this video with them. And once more, if you haven't already answered this and you're just tuning in, I would love to hear from you. What is this time? What is your single greatest challenge when it comes to working with foam or foam clay in general? Um, let me know in the comments below and hopefully that will let, a, let me know what kind of videos I can do to answer your question and answer it in an upcoming video. Thank you guys so much. Cosplay on my friends.